What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Studios Podcast. This week, Grace and I dive deep into our thoughts on work ethic, pet peeves, and the alt-rock king's incubus. So pardon me while I burst into flames. Let's jump right in. Incubus, top topic of this week's podcast. That's right, the band from the late 1990s, early 2000s. They're still making music, alt-rock. And I just wanted to bring them up because... I did not really like them as a kid. I was like way more into Linkin Park and like I'm working on our story sidewalks, which is like suburban. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to find music that takes me back to that time and has the right, the right ounce of melancholy, you know, that you kind of have in your angsty teen years. And, uh, our main characters are like 1920. So I was like, what the hell was I listening to in college? You know? And like, I have a whole bunch of different stuff. Lupe Fiasco was big. I was still big into Linkin Park. I had just started uh, listening to, well, really, I had only heard of Tool. Didn't really get into Tool. That's heavier. And, you know, Vampire Weekend was big when I was in college and stuff like that. So it was just more digging back to see if there was anything that I can find. And I remember uh, the song Warning by Incubus. And so I just threw it up. And was like, damn, this jam still holds up. Go to their Essentials playlist on Apple Music and have been riding that wave all week. Jump into a call today with my whole team. Not a single person's ever heard of the band Incubus. It's kind of sad. One person. He's my age. That don't count. So, yeah, it was definitely a hilarious thing, but I just wanted to shout them out. I definitely have songs like that. Like, I make playlists based on seasons. So it's like fall 2021, uh, summer 2021, and songs that I relate to during that time period. And when I go back to those playlists, I immediately feel what I was feeling then. But I'm not sure if it's because of the music itself or if it's the uh, the memories that it brings up for me. Like, I don't know if I'd showing these songs, other people would feel the same way. So, but yesterday I fell into uh, my summer 2021 or fall 2021 playlist. It was only two years ago, but it, I felt unstoppable. It was awesome. Huh. <laughs> I felt very lonely and sad, but also unstoppable at the same time. It was really interesting. So I get that. Yeah. Yeah. I think what's interesting is my music listening has really developed to be oddly enough like not playlist driven as in like i'm listening to an album or a band see yeah that, i feel like that's more normal i feel like people go for the album no and listen to i don't think so anymore i think it's all about the playlist really i think so People are always like, oh, I'm in a this, I'm in a what, Lord mood. I'm in a the, this person mood. And they'll listen oh, only to that per, or only that person. And I'm, I can never sit through an album like that. I want the variety. I never, I don't know if I've ever sat through an album. I want to have a variety of different kinds of music come on while I'm working on this thing, or at least for pockets of it. Because there are moments of melancholy. There's moments of ridiculous humor. There's moments of family fun. There's moments of good old-fashioned cheesy melodrama romance so you got you got a bit of everything and so i want that i want to capture what it was like being that age running around the suburbs you know outside of that this is a short week grace here is gonna be off for the next two days um yes do you want to share what it's about or yeah it's this um someone's short i'm acting in it um and it's about a girl who decides to get an abortion and it's like just her running through her thoughts the days before she gets the abortion she's 17 i did that so backwards anyway um the thing is the girl making the movie she's half japanese and her mom is gonna be on set making us real japanese food and i'm so excited um, for that that's the best part of uh, <laughs> films for sure that's why people wanted to be on my sets because my mom would cater and they would just talk about my mom's food for years to come so good so times pumped. and also there's a scene where we get to eat uh katsu it, which is like <clears throat> fried cutlet yeah. yeah exactly i'm so excited the, yeah you, until you're on take 25 you know but uh that's true <laughs> it gets nasty 
Well, best of luck. You did not have me read this script. Well, what they gave it to, they were like shooting in two weeks, so they can't, they're not going <laughs> to, <laughs> I'm not going to come in as an actor being like, here are my notes. <laughs> I would. <laughs> I'm sure I would. Wow. That's why I'm not an actor. What do you mean? Wow. I want the movie to be as good as it can be. What's the problem with that? Maybe that's what I like about being the actor. I don't want to, I don't want to, I just want to sit back and do my thing. Not worry about everyone else. <laughs> really? So if you read, a, I'm just so if there's a line that you're like, this line is so bad, you're just like, I'm still going to say Well, it. no, if for like a line I've brought up, if it d- doesn't feel natural. This is why I'm moving towards animation. I don't have any of those problems. We go through our comic book and we, we, I destroyed the line 17 times throughout the process of making one of these issues. Theoretically, it feels like at each stage of the process. Now, this is, I think, as if you're like locked in, you and your team and, you know, you're following our process or whatever. It's like. Yeah, it should only really get better in each phase. As I'm doing shotless for the episodes, I'm rewriting the lines going, oh, now I can see this. I don't need this line or this line might be better for this tone. Or It's just like after you take some time and come back to it, you're, you're armed with more knowledge about the characters and about the world that sometimes things change and adapt. And I'm like, man. And then imagine a couple of years later, you go and you turn it into a show and you just have more access to showcase more. Yeah. It's kind of what, what, what the theme has been for me when reviewing a lot of this stuff. I'm like, wow, this is so bad. I'm so glad I get to redo this before I do it, you know, put it out. That's like your motto for life. Everything. Do the extensive research first and then don't think about it. Kind of. It's like how you do groceries and stuff. Like <laughs> literally everything. I guess you don't want to be. Now I'm just going to shut up because I'm like, oh, God. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but usually the, it comes out pretty decent the first time you do it then. The question is, does it actually mm-hmm. save more time? Depends how long term it goes. The engagement. Very interesting. As in the longer it goes, the more time you'll save. Yeah. Very true. Yeah, But if it's a thing that ended up not being a thing, it ends in like two weeks, you really wasted time. Yeah, but then the debate here is, but then there's it's process, right? So it's like... You, wouldn't you want to commit to the same process for making good decisions once you figure out how, to, how you make good decisions? Mm. So then it's like the time that it doesn't work out, if you're like looking at it holistically, the practice is still worth it so that you don't have to think about your process and change that every time. Whoa, that just got meta. Next yeah, level, yeah. next level. Um, before we get way too deep into the weeds... One of the things that I wanted to cover last week um, that we didn't get to touch on was that you were going to have to sing for your father. His birthday was this weekend, right? Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. I demanded tape, and it I don't was, know what happened. No. I, we know there's no, tape. Like, no, I know there's no, tape of this, no, so it's, where is it? Oh, my gosh. Wait, wait. First of all, first of all, you know, I realized how cool my dad was. I, like, didn't think of him as a cool person, but everyone who was at the party, it, which means, like, my dad's friends, all of our family friends that I used to see when I was a kid, and my dad's girlfriend's friends, and then my immediate best friend, her family, I invited them, and everyone was like, wow, this is so cool. Your What, your dad sings? Because my dad went up with a guitar and sang Brazilian songs with the band. We had a three-person Brazilian band playing Brazilian music. Nice. And they were like, wow, this is so cool, and they're serving Brazilian food, Brazilian drinks, caipirinha, if anyone knows. And... It was funny because I was kind of like, oh, this feels so normal to me. Like all the songs too were songs I'm just familiar with that I grew up with. And when we were, when I was a kid, we used to do this every summer. We'd do a barbecue, invite a bunch of people over and uh, my dad would play all the same songs and force my mom and I to do instruments. I was always so nervous about it. We do the Brazilian instruments. Yeah. Um, Anyway, so it felt very normal to me, but then when it was in a room of 100 people and people were, he was had a spotlight on him, I was like, yeah, I guess it's kind of cool. Anyway, he had wanted me to sing for the longest time, and I kept saying no. Um, and his girlfriend kept texting me on the side being like, you know, your dad really wants you to sing. Like, you really should sing for him. Why? So that's the first question. Why? Yes, I, did you sing a lot as a kid, or like, is this a, think, a tradition or something? No, I, 
that's a good question. I think, I don't know why, he thinks I have a nice voice. I, I really think that's what it comes down to. One time where my mom's friend who I went to karaoke with was like a music person and said, Grace, you should audition for this thing. And so they took me to a recording studio and I sang and we were submitted to this audition. I thought I was fine because everyone was hyping me up and then I heard it and I was like, oh, I suck. But everyone around me is hyping me up still. And my dad would play it all the time in the house. And it was my torture because I, I sang All I Want for Christmas is You and some Japanese song. And it was so bad. And I never thought it was good. I don't know if I ever thought it was good. But anyway, so yeah, that has been my embarrassing moment. And then ever since in high school when I, I used to dance, uh, with this dance company and they wanted to do a singing girls edition and so they picked three of us to do a song during in the middle of our dance show and so I did that twice too and my dad really liked that but again I heard it back and I was like I can't sing so I'm never ever gonna sing again um I like to I like to sing it's fun for myself but I don't want to sing in front of people so I think that I mean so he's heard me sing and I think he likes it just because I'm his daughter you know and he's like oh you sound good and he's like no it's not just because I'm your dad I'm like it's, it is mm -hmm. anyway so then um because the, the girlfriend kept insisting and I felt bad so I was like okay I'll sing a song and I chose this random song that I was gonna sing in Portuguese but I don't want to alienate everyone um, so I chose this English song that kind of has a Brazilian rhythm and so I walked on the stage surprised him and sang and and then afterwards, everyone sent me videos and I watched maybe two seconds of one of the videos. And I was like, I'm not watching any of these. I didn't watch I it. I don't know the video. I because everyone was like, you're so good. But then my best friend, who's always keeps it real with me, was like, nah, you were pretty awkward. And I'm like, yeah, I was. <laughs> I could always count on her to tell me the truth. So I was. Uh, no. Yeah, <laughs> that was that. But I did it for my dad and I he do. liked it. So, yeah, yeah, that's what it's about. How yeah. many people were there? Like a hundred. That's never sing in front of a lot of people. That's a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, I've sang in front of more people than that when I was doing the dance Oof. thing. But I, the, it's funny because the first comments I got, you know, you suck when people are like, wow, you looked really comfortable up there. Like, you look like you knew what you were doing. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, because I sucked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly uh, that. So All funny. the film people listening, it's the same thing when they're movies. So, <laughs> wow, it looked so good it looks yeah, really right, right. great <laughs> and you're like wow that movie sucked didn't it um so yeah, yeah very so, interesting so i'm never gonna show it yeah <laughs> oh i mean i'll it's like i will find it i will pay money no. to find it no and now i know there was 100 people there i'll get it if i want it um it'd be hilarious how was the party in general though it was fun it was weird because i was a receptionist i mean yeah i was the receptionist and my everyone's like well it's your dad's party and you're working and i'm like that is weird the fact that i didn't question that and that's been my reality all my life when there's a party i'm working that i was like wow that's true that my dad always just put me to work i was never enjoying the party that's why i, I liked your mom's party working there it was fun to me i was like this is what a party is i'm just working <laughs> so, so i mean i was but like that but like nah but it's a little different like you got paid to like you know like you were actually that's working. true that's true I mean, we definitely did stuff too, but I think, nah, it's funny because you and I just have different mentalities. I did one big mistake when I was younger, which is I, I'm obviously like I do films and stuff. And so then I became the guy that everybody wanted to shoot their videos of and take photos of. I'm not a photographer, but that was like also, oh, take some right, photos right. of my event. And I thought I was going to be, I thought I was really a really cool idea to give my my cousin solomar who's like my sister to me on her wedding i was like i'm gonna film her wedding and that'll be her gift i'm gonna film her wedding and that'll be her wedding gift and uh oh you did it was it ended up being such a miserable experience because yeah. the pressure to do a good job was just like way too much for me Mm, I think if I was in that position, I would feel that way too. That's the big thing. And then I swore off. Like that was it. After that, I was like, I will never, ever do that again. When I'm here, I'm here to party. And I can't tell you the amount of times I've just said no. They even try to, they and it's my family, so you know they could be aggressive. They've even like taken the camera and tried to put it around my neck. You know, 
I'm wow. Like, uh-uh, bro. No, 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 no. Not today. It's what I do for work. Not when I'm here, you know? So, and that's why at my mom's event, I was like, nope, I'll get people to do it. Hmm. But, and they were all looking at me like, what are you going to do for the party? I was like, no, no. Um, I know how to outsource. I know how to delegate. I totally agree. Like, I don't want to be working the party, but that was always the orders my dad gave out. So that's what we did. Yeah, but now you're an adult. So you're just gonna be like, hey, I kind of want to celebrate you. Yeah, I mean, after the reception thing, I was able to celebrate. So it was fine. But it was funny because while I was receptionist, a bunch of, you know, everyone was walking in saying, oh, you're Grace? Are you Jeff's daughter? Oh, my gosh. I remember you from when you were blah, 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 little. I didn't know anyone. I mean, but and then I also saw some friends that I used to hang out with when we were like three for the first time. Family in forever. friends. You mean, so right? Family yeah. friends. Yeah, it was all it was cool. I give mad props to my dad's girlfriend who really made that happen, I think along with my dad it was a big party yeah so too big your dad's 60 you said right my mom's age He's 60 yeah. Yeah yeah, yeah 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 so we both had 60 that's recently that's interesting huh? mm-hmm. what a epic age my dad went all out he went he was in brazil at carnival last a few weeks ago and then now this so yeah Good for him so what's next on the docket well you know <laughs> we were talking about our work ethic i think <laughs> There's something to be oh, said work there. Ethic. Oh, God, no. As we talk <laughs> yeah. about Grace working at her <laughs> family events. Um, because wh- where did this conversation even start? You just said as a joke, <sighs> I think you're like, you think I'm lazy and I think I'm lazy. I think you said that. Yeah, I think that I have been thinking about it because, um, well, because I've been out of commission with my arm, can't lift in the mornings. Um, and also secondarily, I just accomplished a, a, a pretty big goal I had in one of the games that I play. So after I accomplished that goal in the game, you know, I hit the highest rank in team fight tactics is what happened. Like I beat the game and then they're going to drop new game, a new version of the game. And then I'll want to beat that one. Right. But there's this like lull. So like now my routine where playing that game was a big part of it. It's gone. So all of a sudden it made me realize damn bro like you get so sucked into these other things it just that's what i mean it's like recently i've been like well without lifting and just literally like sitting here and being bored in the mornings and now ending up you know i've been working about an extra two hours every about an extra 90 minutes to two hours every day it feels great as in like oh, it's hey, nice that's and, good yeah like it's super nice and quiet in the morning i put on my jams I'm dancing, I'm writing, and I feel like I'm getting more done there than like the regular work day. And I know a lot of people can like attest to this too. That's a big reason why a lot of entrepreneurs want to get up early. They're like, mm-hmm. before the emails start coming in and all the questions, like I just want to be able to do my thing. And so I get that now that I'm kind of able to do it and I'm just making steady progress every morning in certain areas. That's been making me just think about work work ethic what i'm willing to do what i what i think i is boring like all that stuff is starting to come up because when you run a business you know there's a lot of things um that go into it and there's a lot of areas involved in a creative business and it's just really made me realize like i think the reason why our relationship works so well is because i think she's a harder worker than me so I, it bothers me a lot. And I want, it's like, I know it might sound weird, but I'm like, I was saying like, I want to feel shitty about it. Like, I don't want this mm-hmm. young kid to, uh, to work harder than me. Um, but it's very, you know, I'm, I'm being facetious of course, but like, it's just the real, like this whole, this whole idea of, What is work ethic or work-life balance? I mean, it's just an interesting thing, basically. Mm -hmm. Because I guess what I'm saying is when I'm like, dude, that was effortless. Like, yo, put me in front of a story and I know I'll outrun and outclass all of you. Like, there's just, I had no problem. One of my best friends called me up at 11 o'clock on Friday to break story. She's working on a feature film. She had to get a, a draft to Netflix the following day. I dug right in there, bro. 
from like 10 to 12 on Thursday night, I think. And she was texting me over the weekend like we did it. I got it. I got the script down to 99 pages from 120. Wow. It's better. And she was like, thank you for everything. And I was like, you're damn right. So that is effortless, right? Mm -hmm. But there are other things, sales, marketing, stuff I'm not, I don't know well. I'll I'll look for any distraction possible Mm -hmm. where I think you have a much tighter general focus. You know what I mean? That's hard for me because... That's what it feels like. I, yeah, I do. I feel like I have a bad work ethic and I think... How do you define it? How hard you go at the work, how intensely you go at it. I feel like I'm not that hardcore. Like, I'll work, but I'm not hardcore. And I also feel like, oh, a big thing about work ethic that I incorporate in there that maybe not others don't is complaining. Like, I have such a big thing about complaining that I don't know. I think it was instilled. As in you're pro-complaining or anti-complaining? Anti-complaining. And I feel like I complain too much. I feel like I do. Like, I... uh. I mean, my upbringing was any little complaint, even just like, you know, if I inhale a little too strong and like that's perceived as frustration, I was in trouble. I feel like work ethic also encompasses not complaining when doing the work. And so I feel like I'm bad at it. It's interesting. I don't know how much outwardly I'm complaining. Maybe like I'm not at all, but in my head I am. So then I'm like, okay, that then that's bad or something. And I'm saying to myself, but I've often been praised for my work ethic, but it just feels wrong because... My parents always, I think, disagreed. Or maybe that was the, their way of pushing me. But then I'll meet some people who have crazy well, like work ethics. Their standards were higher than the norm. I guess so. But then sometimes I'll meet people at school who have crazier at work ethics. And then I feel like you, where I, I wish I was surrounded by those people so I could get, get pushed. Instead of just being praised for my work ethic. That's the way to think about it, yeah. When we're doing reviews and we're digging into the work that there's just no, I'm relentless. Mm -hmm. And what they don't really see is it's like playing a role, Mm. you know? Um, Also, there are things that are so built into me, as you saw. We've been also laughing at how like our different pet peeves and worldviews come into play. Oh my gosh, yeah. (laughs) take it away (laughs) i'm passionate it's in the same yeah it's in the same realm but like again so like when i come into a meeting and we're reviewing a video it's like we're talking about something that's like no matter what my age is i'm still putting into work to do the new research to get better so i always laugh at my team going how am i the best project manager the best youtube content creator the best traditional narrative storyteller right the best ceo or whatever like when are you guys all going to beat me in any one of these given areas that's what excites me. So I try to push everybody in that realm. So like there's no, there's nobody at this company that I can't hold up a conversation with. We could talk YouTube thumbnails. We can talk YouTube shorts versus YouTube long form or versus branded content commercial versus whatever. Like, but it's because I'm obsessive about it all. And so when I get into any meeting, it's like I move so fast because the problems with it are so painfully obvious, right? That I'm sure it comes across as like aggressive, relentless, whatever, fast, rude, you name it. Really all it's about is just going as fast as possible. And the tricky part is that it's basically useless for me to just tell them what to do. If they don't know, if they don't learn the skills to find it themselves, we're never gonna make it, right? Because then they're always going to need me to point it out to them. So it takes longer, which makes me even more annoyed, of course. Not like this is like a personal thing, but I know it's necessary to have to sit and say, nope, I'm going to have to sit here and wait for you guys to see it. Like that stupid graph we were looking at earlier today or whatever. You know what I mean? Oh, come on. That was like a teacher moment where the teacher's like fishing for a specific answer in a open-ended reading passage. I wish I could just show the graph. It was a giant. There's a giant obvious... I said the, the volatility. It was like it was like a zigzag. Ah, and I said you said what's obvious about it, and I was like that it's volatile. Yeah, and you're but like that's so broad. I just wanted you to be like, well, there's a big blue line, and right here it goes really, really far down, and then really, really far up. You know, we want for me. 
It was, you know, it's, it, it, honestly, you're right. It was stupid. <laughs> but, like, that's what I mean, where it's like now it's just getting nitpicky. So, like, every time, like, Grace is a very bad um, internet browser, I guess. You know? Yeah. I don't even know how to say it. Yeah. Like, yeah. her Google I skills mean, are not the best. My brain is, like, slower, too, and, like, searching. And I'll, like, it's be really going funny. on a page. And then he's, like, click on this thing. And I'm, like, trying to find it. And he's, like, it's right there. It's right there. Click on it. No, <laughs> nah, that, not that one. The one above. And I'm, like, that makes don't it worse for my brain. Me. I'm, like, I can't find it when you're yelling at me. So, like, that's, <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's what it is. That's how it feels from this end. I definitely know that... I can be short sometimes, you know, it, it, but it stems back from this like efficiency obsession of mine and the fact that I can see certain patterns really quickly. And sometimes I struggle when other people can't see them. This is a very typical INTJ problem that I have been working on for years. When it is slower and it is inefficient, yeah, that can kind of drive me nuts. When it's done cor wrong, uh, small little things. A good one is labeling. Like we have a very s organized system for labeling things at the company. And yet, um, you know, I start seeing all sorts of different labels across things. It drives me nuts. And I just relabeled a bunch of folders last night that I was like, yo. And so things like that can kind of just get on my nerves, but it's more because I just don't like repeating stuff. And I know that everybody at my company is laughing because I repeat myself so much. It's not because I like to, it's because I have to. Because it works. So I, I, oh, you know? I want to jump off that. I think that leads into my pet peeve thing that like you say, you know, like it comes from your, your shortness comes from a wanting efficiency and it's like annoying when others can't see it. I had a moment. I, well, my, one of my weaknesses in that way is with memory and when people don't remember things. And I think it's hard because I'm not saying that I have a better memory than everyone and for everything because there are some things like I remember in, uh, when we were at Comic-Con specifically, you would remember we would go to these panels and you remember numbers and stats of, you know, um, of readers and viewers. I didn't remember any of that, but I can remember like the, the president's cat's name or something like that. Um, so... So, yeah, I have this memory that I guess I've learned is better than the average. And I, rem I just remember those things. I don't try to, but it sticks. And then so then when people ask me the same thing twice or even three times, I get annoyed. And I'm like, we talked about this. And they're like, what? No, we didn't. I'm like, yes, we did. We talked about this. You said this. I said that. You said that. And they're like, oh, I guess we did. And I come off as such a mean person. I, I'm like, we talked about this. That's like I, a quote that I say all the time. Yeah, <laughs> you asked me I that. Know like, now you know? I know why. Because um, I am notorious for that. Yes, Grace knows so, I have purposefully, though, I admit it. Purposefully, I have selective memory. Like, I'm not even, I just, most things I just throw away. Why? Because they don't matter. Uh, this, this might be this. Then why answer. ask? <laughs> Why ask? Why what? you ask me stuff if you're not gonna remember it? I I know this is gonna. I don't know how you're gonna feel about this because I know that you will. So I don't have to if you already do. One of us does, and when I need the information, I can get it. Hmm. I guess it's funny because I mean, yeah, that's your take. And then like with my best friend, she told me my best friend of ten years. She told me when I first met you, the first thing I learned was never ask Grace the same question twice because she don't <laughs> get pissed. Because <laughs> I used to I used to very much help her with her homework i mean we helped each other but you know when she would ask me once and then i had to explain it again i'd get so mad i'm such a mean That's person funny. for that see <laughs> i don't get mad i don't get mad if they ask and you've seen me in meetings go yeah even if yeah. it's the most simple thing yeah. even if it's the most simple thing go hey do you do you actually like hands up if you understand it and if you don't don't be afraid and i will i will happily sit that's what i will do i will happily yeah. sit and explain it until we all feel very, very confident that you wrote it down or did whatever you needed to do. And then it's after that, if I see a repeated mistake, that's when I'm like, do I need to sit and explain this whole thing to you again? Cause I, or, or I'm like, I recorded it. You have a document? Like, like uh, our archiving sheet's a perfect example where I'm like, 
for the love of God, if you ask me what a master and a clean is. And I feel bad because the poor guy didn't even have a chance to get it right, right? <laughs> but it's okay. I'd rather preempt him and be like, mm-hmm. do me a favor, brother, and read. The definitions are right there on the second page. Do you know how many times I've been asked what a master and a clean is mm-hmm. from people after I've given them that sheet? Yeah. And obviously, do you know what it tells me, really? It says, damn, it looks like we should put the definitions on the first page. Hmm because people don't read but but beyond that i'm also like what whoever taught you how to do things and whatever you learn to do is so annoyingly wrong that yes yes you know i avoid good and bad but like it's incorrect because the answers are in front of you guys most of the time and yet you're still asking for help yeah but i don't have a problem i don't have a problem explaining it Right. Like, I was trying to, so, which is nice. So, yeah, very true. Um, I was trying to figure it out. I was, so I was on FaceTime with my friend and th- it took me down this, th- this friend, this very friend of 10 years. She's my doctor friend. And she, I was saying, why is it that I get so mad? Let's dissect this. And then I think it's, I, I in my brain, I dissected probably when people don't remember personal things about me I in my brain I'm like oh they don't care that's what it translates to even if it's that's not true and so that's probably what makes me mad and then uh, and then on top of that it's like I know so much about you why don't you know so much about me oh yeah um (laughs) and then that took me down the rabbit hole of is it males because I've experienced this more with males than females but I've experienced it with both and so I, I did a random google of male versus female memory and a bunch of articles came up of you know females have better memory than males tests show blah 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 females remember more and then she stopped me she said what what are your sources here did you just google that you can't trust that stuff you need to go to so then i went to like a database and then i started researching real scientific studies not you know like usa yeah, white papers yeah yeah and then it showed the opposite it was like there is no there were some differences found in this one experiment but you can't deduce that there's a difference between males and females between these two inconclusive right that's inconclusive what you're yeah yeah and so she i was like i was thrown out so that was a whole lesson in itself of what fake news happens through the internet i guess i mean i did learn this in my psych classes they're always like you know the the yeah, and you can magazines. always spin it yeah yeah they'll extrapolate one little line from a scientific study and make it whatever and so i learned that and then so we were like okay if it's not the memory maybe it's about the encoding we 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 didn't go deeper into that but it's probably like the women or the females encode more actually what i would think is just more that like the memories is probably similar enough but i always go back to evolutionary needs Mm. where it's like did men need evolution like what did they need to remember to survive versus what did women need to remember to survive so it might make yeah, sense yeah. that you guys might have had to develop more socially recognizable memories because you were mm-hmm. more caretakers of the tribe type of thing whereas like it might not have made sense for us since we basically had to remember like how to hunt right but the thing is that I do get uh, uh, mad when people don't remember personal things about me but I also get mad when people don't remember um technical things of you know like steps on how to do this one thing and then they think it's that that they'll just never remember because they can just ask me and then i'll give it to them every time that makes me mad too i'm like you better remember it yes but i i told you i told you that's why we've had this conversation too where i'm like you always like they ask me the same question i'm like that's your fault Whenever you're like the interns or whatever, they uh, got Dale. Most of my day is answering these questions, like questions on Gchat. And I'm like, no, nah, that's, that's different. That's different. That is problem. different. I am saying like, it, like in high school, they were like, oh, how do you access this website on the, the textbook? I'm like, why don't you figure it out? Why am I figuring? Not, not like uh, if interns are asking me things, I, I'm not like, I'm like, OK, fine. <laughs> no, no, but it's the same <laughs> thing. It's like being asked questions. Because people don't want to do the work themselves because they know you have the answers, right? It's the same. Okay. I have the same problem because that's what, and that's why I say like some of the advice I give is like learn how to ignore. Like that's it. Because y- mm. you, it's like, it's like 
the way I look at it, it's that thing. It's like, you know, on the airplane, put the mask on yourself before you put it on somebody else. You start putting the mask on everybody else. You pass out, you die. So it, it sounds a little ruthless, but I'm like, hey, at a certain point, if you have what I said to you when you were saying, oh, I'm getting these questions, I said, make a document, you know, make a video of you answering it. Give it to them one time in one place where they always have it. That way, if they ask, you have the same answer. Did you see the video? Did you read the document? And make them feel like they didn't do the work. Because honestly, and I don't know if this is going into just a general conversation about working with other people, but like not everybody's in the same place. And so I don't, that's probably why it doesn't bother me to explain anymore because I'm like empathetic. I'm just like, and I also know it's like everybody has a different strength and weakness. So like your aptitude for language, for example, you speak like four. Mm-hmm. I speak one. Mm-hmm. Um, you vastly outclass me in that area, right? But if we talk about deducing, linear thinking, yeah, deduction, mm-hmm. for example, mm-hmm. um, you know, without getting into too many details, I somehow successfully predicted Grace's weekend with the mo- with like a the most passing of random things. She did like the most random thing. I forgot. She like get up. She like got grabbed the glass of water, and I was like, "Hey, did did you do this and that and the other thing this weekend?" And she was like, "Yes." <laughs> and I was like, "I was like, I don't know if it seems you know it seems like it's like a cool power, but it's kind of useless." And it's <laughs> like, oh, so I can predict whatever I have allows me to predict things um, and put together what looks like abstract data and find a common point, right? Mm-hmm. And and I'm also I'm also incredibly good at breaking down and simplifying things. All right, you're you okay? Yeah, yeah. You're you're empathetic about it. That's why you don't get mad. But let's not forget how ni- feisty you can get about me not being able to do a Google search. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, so. yeah. But oh, but it's you. <laughs> it's you. You know what I mean? I do think there's that element. My expectations of you are different. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I wouldn't. You don't see me doing that to people on calls, <laughs> right? You know. No. Um, yeah. So when I talk about this, though, it's hard for me because there's a part of me with the memory thing that I understand that that's just a me thing and it's all me and I don't need to be getting mad about it. It's like I believe but I think that's thing. part of growth. But also uh, sometimes I do want to get mad. <laughs> I just I, like, again, Fuck. I think it, I just think it's I think it is a part of growth where it's like even if you do get mad, you get over it a lot quicker because you're just like that was just that's just me. Yeah, yeah. You know, yesterday I was beating myself up quite a bit. This earlier yeah. this week. I just had a rough, you know, I'm not the best with girls. I guess I'll just say that. So I was just beating myself up a little bit. But you could see, it's not that you don't feel things, right? You still feel all the same things. But once you develop more skills, it's about how fast can you process and like move on. That's what I find. So when I'm beating myself up, I'm like, this is temporary. You'll feel better tomorrow. Bah, 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 bah. Do these things. Listen to this song. Get into this kind of a meeting, break some story and remember who you are. You know, you're the man. You're going to do this thing, whatever we're trying to do, whatever it is. And then like, you know, so you can kind of, to me, it's about being able to process emotions and get through things a lot quicker um, as opposed to just getting stuck in those feelings and letting those feelings then dictate like the rest of your week or whatever, right? Then you lose a whole week. I'm just trying to lose a day, not a week right now. And if I do that more than the other guy, I have an advantage. So that's why somehow we end up back with like emotional control, (laughs) self-awareness seems to always end there. Um, But yeah, it's definitely been a funny thing where I'm like, there's like a healthy rivalry that I have with you of like, oh, that's right. Now I'm working an extra hour and a half each morning. Now what you going to say, you know, when I want to take my extra 10 minutes at lunch. That she's always like, you ready? You ready to work? You ready? You ready, bro? And I'm I was, still gonna give you sh- for no, it no, if you it's should. in the middle of the day. You should. Like, yeah, that's when I'm here, so. <laughs> <laughs> you should. And by the way, like, we set it up where I was like, this is who I want to be, and you must, you have these things I don't, and you need to push them out of me. However you can. And so she knows how to it's trigger It's hard, because like, yeah, it's hard though, because I feel like most of the time, my instinct is to be super rude. And then I have to always like scale back from that, <laughs> not to be super rude. So it's been that. So like my first instinct was to not say anything at all. But now I'm trying to learn how to translate. I think, it. yeah, I mean, it's good. I think overall, 
it ne- we never take anything we say personally. So it's like during the work day and stuff, you know, if we're having like a heart to heart or whatever, and then, but we kind of know, or I'll say it, I'll be like, yo, like for real though. You know what I mean? We'll have like a moment. I've learned when you're like, yo, can I be real? Sometimes you bring <laughs> that up out of nowhere and I'm like, my heart stops. And you're like, this chicken's overcooked. Like oh. you'll say something <laughs> like that. And I'm always like, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, maybe I got to work on that too. Pull yeah. that a lot. <laughs> I'm sure I do that one. Um, I think when you're looking for partners and stuff, um, collaborators and close partners, I'm, I feel like finding, you know, complementary, um, at least in this case, personalities. Uh, so we're not the same by any means, but the fact that she has things that I envy, I think is really that I want. It's kind of like, you know, bro, I'm just going to go anime. It's kind of like blue lock, you know, there's this whole theme about like devouring somebody else. So like they're gaining each other's by, by playing with each other, they're gaining each other's skills and adapting it and taking it for themselves. That's kind of how I look at it where I'm like, if this person has this like work ethic that's just better than mine, I just got to be around them. And then hopefully my, my ambition will want me to beat them. And then that will allow me to take on that thing that, that, that I've wanted. So yeah, that's, that's really <laughs> where we're going to cool. end this one. Yeah. Um, life hack of the week life hack do we have one this week yeah it's that grocery items are non-refundable on amazon even if it's dry product so dale accidentally had the subscription order of a big box of oats come and he doesn't need it because he's not eating oats right now so we try to re- return it and we couldn't. So just refund it. They refunded us. And now we have like four bags of oats. I've been texting people to try to figure out who to give it They're to. They're unopened but. bags. Yeah. To be clear. It's not yeah. like, it's not like yeah, I took yeah, a handful yeah. and decided. No. Nah. Yeah. We didn't even open the box, but we still can't refund it just because um, it's Amazon I, policy. It makes sense. Yeah. It makes sense. And yet again, goes back to why Amazon, why nobody's going to be able to beat Amazon. Because what company yeah. is willing to just refund it just because take all of that uh yeah like they do yeah. not they are just truly the most customer centric e-commerce company on the planet so why would i go anywhere else if they make it that easy for me right yeah it's tough i'm not i, I don't i mean it's amazing but it's tough for smaller yeah. places yeah they're the easiest thing to deal with when there's a problem. Like, honestly, like the FedEx issue we had earlier this year, we had $5,000 yeah. worth of goods stolen from us. It was Nothing. a huge, huge, huge pain in the ass. I know if it was him. I know if it was through Amazon, it would have been a lot better of an experience. Yeah. They straight up just started ignoring us at one point. I'm like, this is like a crime. Hate them or don't. But Amazon. It's got the service. They know what they're doing. Okay. Cool. Questions? I think I was at my restaurant the other day and I was just like trying to get to know someone and they're like, come on, like, I want to get to know you. Like, just hit me with questions. And I was like, literally, no, don't say that to me. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. You know, what's actually funny too. We didn't get to, we'll get into this next time, but um, we've been watching a lot of Grace's face and grace's reactions because oh we're God. doing a youtube series i was shocked that i make all those faces like, it's amazing because there's a re i was trying to tell her she's like why do you want me to do this i'm like dude you are the perfect person to do these and now she now you know why yeah and that's why i'm laughing every time we do the podcast because it's like every time i ask that question you have such a big reaction to it so <laughs> so yes, you know i actually brought up with, with other people at my like other people at my restaurant and my friends, I was like, you know, like that I make big reactions and they're like, you didn't know. And I was like, no, yeah, <laughs> so weird. <laughs> anyway, it's <laughs> too good, man. Oh, oh, someone asked me this. So maybe it's cheap, but would you rather have every text that you've ever sent exposed on the internet or have to pee every five minutes for the rest of your life. I this one stumped me. 
I'm I can't imagine that's the most random two things put together. Don't yeah. know what the point like what that's supposed to really say. However, this one's easy and it's my tax. That one's easy because really? I have always been paranoid about them. Oh my god, so, I said the same thing. Like I for example, like you're not going to find you'll find some sex thing because some girls just, you know, whatever. Um I'm, I'm I was they want stuff like that and I'm trying, but really <laughs> You won't find, like, I'm also, I'm just like, they'll try and I'll be like, mm, I don't know, man. They can hack my phone. I'm not feeling this. You know? There's definitely stupid stuff and, like, very inappropriate language and I've said inappropriate things, but, like, it's in context, it's jokes and stuff, but there's not even, like, go ahead. Also, it's only relevant if you're famous, so that's that. Like, if you're not famous, it's not a problem. It will be a problem for me. But there's no way I could live a life where I have to pee every five minutes. Like, what is what kind of question is that? Well, so I had said, it's like, just so unreasonable. for the people who don't want the text thing, um, you can rock diapers. But, oh, no. What? I think I mixed the it up. Grace, if you're peeing every wait, five wait, minutes, wait, wait, you'll wait, be wait, done wait, with a diaper very soon. I think, wait, wait, wait. I think I mixed the question up. I think the question was, would you, would you rather pee every five minutes or never be able to laugh again? that was the one that and i the text was a different one <laughs> but anyway i had made my custom question there so i guess that's the answer <laughs> well, now i'm thinking about the laugh one too wait I wait mean, yeah what would you do pee every five minutes or la- never laugh again? i genuinely wait, let me ask the question cleanly would you rather have to pee every five minutes or never be able to laugh again okay I love that you did that, but I'm definitely making them keep in all the mistakes that you made. So just deal with it. (laughs) Okay. I will say it's got to be the same thing. You'd never laugh again. I mean. I brought up the diaper When you compare it to having to pee every five minutes, that's like you can't live. That's awful. That's pretty awful. (laughs) Grace. Grace. (laughs) Grace. You can't sleep. But I'm like, Grace. how much are you? You can't sleep, oh, Grace. Oh, you can't sleep. You'll die. That's like you just can't. I just, you know, like I can't even fathom. You just can't operate. <laughs> like you can survive so not laughing. Life would be less fun, obviously. But you just, I can't imagine a world where I have to pee every five minutes. <laughs> I yell at you for having to pee every two hours. You know what I mean? <laughs> I do go a lot. Yeah. That's crazy. Who would have thought? You know, that's a funny one because it's like so big. Like, I'm like, there's basically, there's a lot of things that that would be like the the peeing every five minutes. Like you just set a bar so high. Mm. I would be asking me questions to figure out if anything actually beats that. Beats that? No. Now that I think, yeah, Yeah, that's like made me a little emotional. (laughs) Okay. Um, I have no yeah you caught me there yeah I saw this one recently would you rather fight a hundred duck sized horses or one (laughs) horse sized duck oh (laughs) (laughs) I think it was something like that that I was just like what that's a tough one I think I would go for the horse sized duck that's one of them even though the beak is terrifying on a big thing like that but if I could figure out a way to like get behind it or ride it maybe they're just softer horses they can kick and if there's a hundred of them I know they're small but if there is a hundred of them I can get pummeled it's very interesting so I just it's hard for me to not think of the fact that they're small yeah, but there's a hundred of them. They're not that. A hundred is a lot. It's a I should lot. Be, I should do ten. Yeah. Ten would be one that is definitely a lot more questionable. Or yeah. Even twenty. The question that I'd be thinking is, can horses climb? Like, if they can climb on each other. But really, if they can't get through each other, then, like, you're not going to really have that much happening. Like, what if you just got, like, metal things up to your knees could they really do anything you mm. could kick like 10 all right let's not get into animal abuse on this show. no oh my god i have the mouth crest again you're gonna need a that life was... hack against that 
But also, no one would have known. But now we all know. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful night, everybody. Work hard. Be nice. Keep changing. See you in the next one. Deuces. <laughs>